Well, hi, everybody. Melinda Tankard, Rees Movement Director at Collective Shout for a World Free of Sexploitation. Got a special Instagram Live for you right now. I'm going to be welcoming my colleague, uh, Daniel, Daniel Principe, who will be uh, joining us to have a chat about his first week officially with us at Collective Shout. Um, as a result of a successful fundraising campaign, we uh, were able to employ Daniel and uh, he's just started with us. I'm just accepting him now. Have I got you, Daniel? <laughs> I really hope so. Ah, oh, there we go. Well done. Good afternoon. Okay. Ooh. Hello. How's things? Pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, as good as life can be in lockdown, Sydney. So that's true. Well, yeah. hopefully we'll liven that up for you now that you're uh, now that you've joined our Collective Shark campaign strategy team. Uh, how's it feeling? How's it feeling? Your, your first week on board? It's 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 unique. Obviously, as you know, Melinda. Obviously, we've been we've been trying to work together in this space for five, six years. We've known each other probably for about eight-ish years. And so, yeah, it seems like in some ways it's a long time coming. It seems mm -hmm. like it's a progression. And obviously it's just wonderful, you know, like we've obviously had so many conversations over the years about what we could create or what we could do for young men, young women, for families, for schools, for communities. And mm -hmm. it's wonderful to have had the goodwill um, of so many people who have who have encouraged this and made this happen. And so I'm just so grateful. Obviously, us as a team, we get on so well and it feels like we've been an unofficial team for many, many years. So it it's does. wonderful to make it official. How did you feel when the, the funds started to come in? You know, we launched this end of financial year appeal. You know, I'm never sure how, they, how they're going to go. We're, we've been struggling for a, a decade, really. And then suddenly all these funds came in for you. How, how did that feel for you personally that so many people wanted to back you, especially uh, with uh, our work with young men? Yeah, I, obviously it's just so humbling. I mean, to you always think, oh, are we, are we making a difference? Is this useful, what we're doing? Do people recognise the value or the need or the urgency of something like this? And, yeah, to obviously have had had that kind of goodwill to have people want to obviously back this and support it is just absolutely wonderful. Um, I think it gives us a lot of confidence going forward that there, that there is a growing community, that there has been growing awareness through, you know, factors outside of what we can do, but just culture has been a shift mm -hmm. the arms of all that we've been talking about for many years. And obviously you for far longer than I have um, are starting to hit hit home and tragically so. And so there's obviously such a need for this and, and people recognise it. And I just feel like it's such a privilege to to be involved part of the community of activists, supporters, donors and supporters. And yeah, I'm, I'm just so grateful for that. So I just want to thank everyone uh, for making this possible. Um, it's, it's a real privilege and, and I, I really look forward to hopefully doing so much um, with the goodwill and faith that's been placed in us. Yeah, we're looking forward to it as well. Daniel, for those that haven't met you before who don't know you, what's it, tell us a bit about your background, where have you worked in the past and, and what led you to Collective Shout? Yeah, great question. So I'm a health professional by training and then have done postgraduate studies in media and PR and have a very strange but unique interest in propaganda. And so from a... Uh, interest perspective i i see propaganda at work through social media through the sexualization of women and girls through the uh harmful and limited messages men receive about themselves and, and about women and so i see all of that at, through one particular lens is obviously propaganda and i'm interested in on, on that front and the i i think uh, the, the stories, we're all shaped by stories that impact us and, and both my own and those that I've now listened to over the years and those mm -hmm. of people that loved and cared about and grown up love. Uh, and it obviously makes, you know, this kind of work just um, uh, so deeply heartfelt and so, you know, so connected to it because I recognise my own story in it and so many people that I care about have been impacted, I you know. There's, there's not too many in particular women that you speak to who don't know either, the, you know, someone or tragically themselves who have gone through something 
result mm -hmm. of issues. Mm -hmm. What are your hopes for the next 12 months? What, what do you really want to get stuck into? What kind of changes would you like to see? Oh, goodness. Goodness. <laughs> Ask any idealist what he'd like to see. My goodness. Uh, well, obviously, I can't get out of lockdown and yeah. get back to all the school engagements. We obviously were going to be across, what, four or four different states over the next, you know, two or three months. And we so had three booked. months pretty much straight booked. Yeah. yeah forward to getting that happening again i think for me it's like making that happen connecting with the communities and just our different supporters and just other people who are surfacing now all of a sudden who want to be involved who want to get active in this space and and find out ways obviously they they themselves can help so obviously whether that's directing people uh to collective shout campaigns that obviously will be ongoing whether that's obviously people to contact their MPs around eight which we need to see in this country and we need to get a wriggle on on that yeah. um you know there are a couple of the big things that mind and and you know just i think putting this on the radar of policy you know, and and policy makers and and making sure people are aware of, of these issues currently to have lots and lots more school engagements and obviously there's great concern for disrespectful uh, behavior sexual harassment coercive control uh, the pressures that too many boys are, are putting on uh, young women to behave in inappropriate ways to provide sex acts. Um, so many girls reporting to us the the pressure to um, behave in pornified uh, ways. Mm -hmm. What do you feel you can offer our young men? What 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 do you want to see change, especially uh, with our with our boys? Yeah, goodness. Well, in terms of what I can offer personally, I hope that I would just always be honest about my shortcomings, about my own journey, that I'm no, I'm no saint who's got it all together, that I'm very much on a journey trying to become a man uh, that, say, you know, represents all the things that we try to embody and talk about. And I recognise that that's a journey, that's a process, that's a, a daily reflection and consideration um, so, yeah, I think for me, what I want to offer to them is the fact that, you know, I'm on this journey with them. I'm having to negotiate a sexualized alongside them. You know, I'm trying to make sure that I uh, make sure that my own well-being and health is is um, is in align with what, what I say that I value and that it, these messages aren't actually taking hold of my own heart and mind. It impacts me um, and the world around me. And mm -hmm. so... I I like that's that's the thing that I want to share with them that this mm -hmm. is something that a continuous journey uh, in terms of what I hope for for these young men is you know I was just saying yesterday um, to a radio station that you know like what's encouraged me so much is that there's so many sweet young boys and being able to speak to them before you see this callousness start to manifest before the empathy is crushed out of them giving them the permission um and and not that's just not for me but for their schools through the culture and community around them that they don't have to succumb to some of the worst stereotypes uh, of masculinity that they can reject some of those toxic narratives and actually mm -hmm. have something far healthier for them where they mm -hmm. can embody you know um resilience as well as kindness where they can embody assertive as well as empathy you know mm -hmm. and holding place others and, and using what it is to be young men for good in this world i think that's that's before all of us that's you know that i want to champion and embrace and, and go on that journey with them um mm -hmm. and, and we that we see that that's a liberating thing for young boys you know mm -hmm. we see the response where for, like they've not known that there's an alternative yeah. um is when we unpack healthy masculinity and I run that workshop with the boys, you know, we pull out, we talk about what we want, what, what mm -hmm. it could be, how do we want to reimagine it? And then the tragedy, then when we ask, you know, where, where can we see those kinds of voices or persons represented in society? It's really hard mm -hmm. for them and role models to look. Obviously it's beautiful when they can see dad or uncle or grandfather or a teacher, but for most part, boys aren't being modeled that and so yeah. yeah that's that's something that is collective it's not just with me i only mm -hmm. pardon it all and hopefully mm -hmm. i'm a bit of a wrecking ball and some toxic ideas yeah, um, yeah. well we need that wrecking ball that's for sure yeah. i was reflecting on some of the profound 
engagements that we had before this latest round of lockdown. So you and I went to WA, we went to Queensland, including regional Queensland, and our last events before the latest restrictions uh, were in Nowra, New South Wales, and in Sydney. I wonder if you would describe some of those more profound encounters, like I was thinking back on those boys who in the Blue Mountains who just started to cry and apologise to each other and apologise to girls. Do you want to just share with our supporters what that felt like to, to experience those moments? I mean, I know I experienced that as a great privilege. I'd love to hear, you know, for you to describe what that's like. Yeah, I would say that's probably one of the most heartening memories that I carry in this time. I think it was just, for me, the, the what you just hope for, the little utopian moment. Right. Oh, this is what it looks like for us to just as men own up to our shortcomings, own up to the ways that we have not treated ourselves, one another, and in particular the women and girls in our lives as we ought to. And to see that reflection, to see of their own accord to one another, the front, to reach and, and, and connect with one another and own up to knowledge uh, how they haven't lived up to what they said they should have, where they haven't treated each other with kindness, where they've actually undermined one another and, you know, completely, um, yeah, uh, in tragic ways, just said horrific things to one another and to see them come together and, and, and feel the weight of that, but also in a wonderful exchange of, you know, not a cheap forgiveness, but a sense of, you know, thanks for acknowledging that. That means a lot. How can we go forward from mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. to another? And I just thought it was just so profound. I just thought, yeah, like wow, to create a space where there's permission to acknowledge that we haven't lived up to our ideal, uh, that we need to reflect and then hopefully go away, act mm -hmm. better, and have a more compelling vision of what true humanity would look like and how to live that out. I just think it was, yeah. but it was so profound. and. Yeah, probably one of the moments that I hold most dear over the last five years of, of these mm -hmm. sort of yeah. Yes. Daniel, in regard to Collective Shout, you know, we celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, was just amazing to look back on all of the successes, all the campaign victories we'd had in that time, some of the, the global engagement and reach that we've had. Uh, what what would be give us your best pitch? Why should people join Collective Shout, and why should men and boys especially uh, sign up to Collective Shout? You know, we, we'll welcome anyone that shares our cause. Uh, what pitch would you make, especially to young men, as to why they should get involved? Yeah, it's a great question. So yeah, there's there's so much that's good about what Collective Shout does, and I think so much of it comes back to you know our, our, our favourite quote, which is the standard part of the standard you accept and. You know, unfortunately in society, I think we've prioritized essentially being seen as polite or not rocking the boat, which is great for most day-to-day -day interactions, but we're not talking about minor misunderstanding. We're talking about the objectification of women and sexualization of girls. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about stuff that's a matter of opinion or difference. We're talking about some of the worst um, ideas and attitudes, the worst ways that corporations and advertisers appeal to people's worst instincts and, yes, yeah, sell, sell bodies and sell ideas and harmful ideas um, that we shouldn't accept. And so I just want to say, irrespective of whatever happens between myself and Collective Shout, let it be known on record that your voice has been so needed not only in Australia, Society, but globally to actually remind us that we shouldn't be sleeping on these things. We shouldn't be actually turning a blind eye to the sexualization of young girls, to the objectification of women and, you know, that violence and sexualized violence has been made okay, that the porn industry has been unchecked, that, you know, trafficking has not been called out, that mm -hmm. there hasn't been opportunities for us as a society to have a real cultural reckoning with what we've just made to be okay, that we've laughed at. And that's the, the, why I got involved is seeing your presentation eight years ago. I was told to meet Melinda Tankard Reese, and then I went to meet Melinda, or at least listen to you speak. And, mm -hmm. you know, how, how can you see all of that and, and yeah. say, say with that? And then that comes back to the second part of your question, which is, you know, looking at the fact that why should men care? Well, for me, it's like, as I say to the young boys, like these advertisers, these corporations, like, 
they hold you in such low regard. The, the fact that they appeal to your worst instincts and market products and I about sex, love, masculinity, women, you know, um, in, in such de degrading way, in ways that I think you should reject offhand, um, but they think that women are like, you know, yeah. and I, I think I, I so see this as an actual movement and as a message that in, that actually champions what men could be and ought to be. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think, you know, there's so many wrong ideas uh, uh, about messages that actually push back on this. And in actual fact, men should welcome this, that there's a group of women who for many, many years have actually been saying, no, that's, we, we think men are created for so much more than that. We actually think their place in society, whether it's in a family, in a community, in a sporting club, in politics, in business, is actually to not walk past, set better standards, to not be biased. Um, and that can pull men out to something far better and far greater in terms of their mm -hmm. conduct, their beliefs and attitudes. So I actually see it as such a pro-man and a pro-man move. Um, mm -hmm. But again, at the same time, I recognise that to, to get on the court and be involved in this stuff, we have to check ourselves and reflect on our own behaviour, reflect on the ways that we've treated men, uh, and sorry, treated women, treated girls in our lives and some of the attitudes that we've adopted. And, and you know, that's been an ongoing journey and something to, to continually think about. Um, but at the time, I think, you know, wow, this is, this is a message that's needed. And we've seen the harms of the sexual revolution. We've seen the chaos that's been wrought upon society. I'm so glad that you all have been a voice for far longer than I have uh, in this space. And so it's just a privilege to... Mm -hmm. to in and you know you've paved the way so that i can have an opportunity to to do this and so i'm just so grateful melinda for all you and your team done for the uh, you know fights you've taken on for the things that you've said that needed to be said um so it's a privilege to serve alongside you and uh and and get on the court with you thank you so much Daniel, for those really encouraging and gracious words. Uh, we are looking forward to working with you to really bring about some social change and cultural transformation that's so desperately needed. So onward and upward, and uh, look forward to seeing what we can all do together. Thanks, yeah, thanks everyone who's joined as well. Yeah, thanks everyone for, for dialing in. And yeah, looking forward to it and hopefully we'll out of lockdown soon enough. But yeah, thanks Melinda, great to, great to join you. And yeah, talk again soon, I'm sure. We sure will. Bye. Bye.